Hello there. What's going on? Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Ellie Moses again. I'm a 20 year old law and film student here in Sydney, Australia, trying to make my way in the YouTube universe and hope you guys can tag along for the ride. Welcome back to another movie review today. Um, I hardly have done these lately on the channel, but today we'll be reviewing Coming to America. And yeah, just a quick rundown on my ranking system to all the new subscribers. I know um, my f our current subscribers and like subscribers of old, of old, as I say, uh, will know the ranking system, but my ranking system basically runs off Star Wars. And from the top of the order, you have Grandmaster, then you have Jedi Master, then you have Jedi Knight, then you have Padawan, Youngling, and Trash Compactor. So pretty self-explanatory. So that's how the ranking system goes. But yeah, um, into the review for Coming to America, um, it took me three watches to finish the film. Now that's not saying anything about the quality yet um the first watch i was watching it i got about 25 minutes in then i had family come over and my little cousins hadn't watched kong skull island yet so we watched kong skull island <laughs> and then the second watch i had to go and then i finally had 40 minutes left and i just finished through it this morning so in coming to america i guess um we follow this time prince akim becomes king akim and on his journey to find his long lost bastard son, I guess, in America. And basically he's the heir to the throne because of Zamundan traditions. Um, the traditions of Zamunda is that he needs an heir to the throne because uh, Prince Akim had three daughters and yes, his seed, as they make a joke about it in the film, his seed was a, unable to procure a male heir to his throne. And um, what can I say about this film? Like, I'm a massive fan of Eddie Murphy. I've been watching Eddie Murphy uh, since a kid with like daddy daycare. I was thinking about that film the other day actually and just how much it makes me laugh and how stupid it is. Um, I've seen his comedies are uh, delirious and raw and they're absolutely fantastic. Eddie Murphy in his prime. I've watched Beverly Hills Cop, um, all of them actually. And I watched them for the first time about, a t about two years ago and I couldn't stop laughing at the first two. The third one was okay. I still find it enjoyable even though it's like not the bet rated the best but I still find Eddie Murphy to be hilarious and even um in the his latest Netflix film Dolomite I actually found it quite enjoyable and funny I thought it was like a nice original take and um I think it was like a remake of the old Dolomite but I actually found it really interesting but yeah going into coming to America guys um I didn't really uh, think this film captured the magic of the original coming to America. I don't think the original coming to America is as groundbreaking and revolutionary um, Like as some people may think I do think it is quite funny It is features Eddie Murphy in his prime and I do quite enjoy it and um, With this film, I just think it completely fails to capture the magic the original I mean, I I, I won't go into spoiler details as much but I did not laugh past the 20 mark or uh, 20 minute mark of this film. I did chuckle a little bit here and there within the first 20 minutes. There was a few surprise guests and cameos from certain actors and in particular a funeral scene that had me chuckling quite a bit. Um, another standout within this film I'd say is Wesley Snipes as General Izzy. Um, even though he didn't make me laugh as much, I can tell he's having like a pretty fun time in the character. He's just mucking around on set and he's just doing all these little dance moves as General Izzy. And I can tell he's just like, Eddie Murphy probably told him or the director on set told him, just like, have fun with it, man. And it, like, you can tell Wesley Snipes is having a fun time. He's just, he earns his paycheck, but he's just there to have a fun time and muck around. But my really real gripe with this film is obviously Prince Akeem uh, goes to get his male heir and returns to America. But the coming to America really only lasts around not five minutes within this film. I mean, we get a quick establishing scene of Lavelle Johnson, who's uh, uh, um, uh, Akeem's long lost bastard son, and his mother is played by Leslie Jones. And we have this like quick flashback sequence, and I think it features a de-aged uh, Eddie Murphy and Leslie Jones, yeah, just rides on top of him, which I just found completely distracting and not funny. Like, yeah, it was completely disturbing. Like, I don't find Leslie Jones as funny or 
if not like this is nothing against her but in this film she completely plays the stereotypical i guess black woman who's like really over the top and funny and from queens like hey y'all but like oh that was a poor impression but like i didn't find it funny at all i feel like this film tried to be funny in a lot of scenes and it completely missed the mark it just fails to capture the magic of the original and even though eddie murphy i feel plays his role pretty well as prince akeem or king akeem in this film as well um i do feel like in the emotional scenes he's really great in this film i feel like he missed the mark completely with the comedy he's not as funny as he was in the original film even semi in this film um wasn't as funny it was just a dished out side character he does have a few funny interactions or not funny i guess like just a few amusing interactions i'd say with tracy morgan's uncle reem but other than that um i didn't find semi to be as funny or as major as a side character as he was in the first film compared to this one and um a lot of people were saying on my stream yesterday that this film went there and it went woke um it does go woke in some bits but that's just me saying it. it's a bit subtle here and there i mean there's one scene completely where lavelle johnson um is talking to one of prince akeem's daughters and he's standing on the staircase and she's here and she walks up to talk to him and stands the top of him and the camera pairs down okay um there's a few scenes talking about the current political quiet uh, climate it's like oh prince akeem you came back like it was in the barber shop and it's a cool little throwback there's a few little homages here and there that are that like i was like oh that's amusing like obviously you're gonna homage the original like a little bit but there's uh, we have a throwback to the barbershop and they're talking about the current change in the political climate saying oh we had a black president but it's all gone to shit now and then um you now can change your uh now you now can change your balls apparently like you can switch whether you have a balls or like a vagina like basically alluding to you can change genders now and then as was i was like okay fair enough i didn't find that funny at all but it's just like and there's a couple scenes as well where um they talk about women empowerment and the degrading of women and um uh, an over sexualized uh no no uh so, um something one of the priests is like just a the degenerating man and i was just like okay okay there's you're throwing them hits there and then there was one scene probably the most laughter i got out of the film is just there's this one scene i'm gonna spoil it a little bit with interactions with general izzy's uh guards and prince akeem's daughters and one of his daughters is about 12 years old i say and she sends one of these like guards completely flying across the room i found it laughable <laughs> i found it completely laughable like just for a girl power scene and there is a girl power scene at the end but that that was the scene she sends this complete military general flying like a little 12 year old girl that's the same like the guy was probably the size of like ufc fighter <laughs> Derek lewis and he just he just sends him flying like he's a heavyweight and she sends him flying and he's sliding across the table i was like huh i was just like i was like what the heck and this film tries to be funny at certain bits as i said past the 20 minute mark i did not find any laughter at all like it just didn't feel funny to me it was like a it was a very forgettable film and I, i'm trying to remember as much as i can but i can't and i just finished it about 20 minutes ago i'm trying to remember what i can but unfortunately as a sequel it misses the mark the film reminded me of some of like adam sandler's films such as blended and jack and jill that goofy wannabe trying to be funny comedy but it just doesn't quite land the mark and unfortunately that's what it is and i'm a massive fan of eddie murphy i absolutely love him i mean i didn't grow up with him as i I was only born in 2000 but i've watched his stuff as i've grown up and i've tried to watch what i can obviously he is hit and miss here and there um with some of his later films i think norbert is one of them i think norbert or dr doolittle um it's okay but yeah this film really missed the mark for me unfortunately and apart from a few chuckles here and there and eddie murphy um i really do enjoy him in the role quite a bit and there's a few homages as well to mcdowell's <laughs> i do quite enjoy the mcdowell's like rip off thing and he's like oh man like when i made the mcfurby <laughs> mcflurby uh, uh, mcdonald's came at me with all these copyright infringements but we put the toppings at the bottom and i just <laughs> i can't i don't know i just quite, i always found mcdowell's quite funny it's just like these rip off <laughs> mcdonald's but yeah other than that guys um coming to america is a really forgettable sequel and um I, I i'd go as far to call it as a bit of a flop i mean 
if you don't have Amazon Prime, don't get don't don't go out of your way to get Amazon Prime to watch Coming to America. It's really not that worth it. I mean, I'll give you my account if you want to watch it. Like, I don't care, but it is on Amazon Prime. Don't go out of way to get it. If you do have Amazon Prime, um, if you want to watch it, watch it. There's a few chuckles here and there. I mean, the film is almost two hours and it felt like a long two hours to me. I mean, it did take three days for me to finish, but that's because I had other stuff on. But <laughs> in terms of a ranking, guys, I'm going to give Coming to America the rank of Youngling. Yes, guys, um, that is the lowest ranking I've ever given something on my channel so far. Nothing's got the trash compactor yet, but I was tossing up between Padawan, but I was just like, there's not that much I really enjoyed to make it just below average. But yeah, I am going to give it the rank of Youngling, although I had a few chuckles here and there. The film was really disappointing and really missed the mark, in my opinion. And if you are looking for the woke stuff, the subtle stuff is there as well. It's just unfortunate. Um... I felt like Eddie Murphy definitely held back on his humor there. Whereas like if you watch his old stuff and coming to America, it's really like out there and they go for it. I feel like they were really holding back on the comedy here and restricted in terms of how far they went and to what lengths they went. Um, they were very 2021, I guess, with the jokes. So let's keep it at that. But yeah, other than that, guys, if you've enjoyed, um, hit the like button, subscribe and share. If not, it's all good. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. And as always, it's been your boy, Ellie Moses. Take care and peace.